You may leave the runway. Auf Wiedersehen. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. The tribe has spoken. You're fired. You have been chopped. You are no longer in the running of becoming America's next top model. Hey, Hooping World, it's Hannah. So last week I found out that I was one of three contestants who did not get enough votes to make it on to the next round performance week of Hooping Idol. A lot of people were surprised by this. A lot of people thought that I would make it to the final three and maybe could even win the whole thing. And I'm not being modest. I thought I could do that too. I had done really well with my videos. Two of my four videos were ranked number one by the judges. And yet here I am making an entirely different video than what we all thought I would be making this week. And I wanted to talk about why. I'm not surprised I was eliminated. The reason is because Hooping Idol as is more about marketing than it is about actually making videos or hula hooping. So let this be a lesson to us all about how to effectively market for Hooping Idol and maybe you can learn from some of my mistakes. There was another thing that impacted my progress in Hooping Idol as well and that was my own mindset. My own mindset became a detriment to my ability to make videos and how I self-marketed and because of that I didn't make it on. So this is what happened. After Frank Sinatra week I was riding high and I was feeling really good about myself and what I had achieved and I was feeling so good that, that I then actually started to psych myself out. A couple of things happened. One, I started thinking about winning. That's a mistake for me because me personally I'm motivated by by my internal competition more than external competition But I started thinking about winning and that shifted my mindset from focusing on the being in the moment and the art that I was creating to thinking about the future for me personally That was a problem. Maybe other people work better when they're competitive in that way I also started thinking about how I could make the next video even better because I thought I had to one-up myself I wanted to make fantasy week not only better, but also bigger. I wanted it to be more surprising more impactful I wanted people to talk about it even more than they already had talked about all my other videos. I went wrong here because the focus for me has always been about making something that I was proud of and enthusiastic about that I had created from my own mind that was interesting to me. This video I lost touch with that goal. It was entirely the wrong focus to have. So I developed a complicated plotline, stranded mermaid on the beach, found by scientists, taken to a facility to be studied. She accesses her hula hoops. Lo and behold the hula hoops are magical hula hoops and she can transform into a human because she's a shapeshifter and then she hula hoops and then hula hoops her way back to the ocean. The judges commented that the theme on this plot line was a little shaky and I definitely agreed with them. But because I wanted this video to be more, to be bigger, to be better, to be more interesting, to be more complicated, I had the wrong focus and I lost focus on what I needed to have, which was creating a beautiful video that I loved and wanted to share with the world. And as soon as we started filming, I was heavily doubting my concept. I had doubted goth week in a similar way, so I knew that I could probably just push through it and keep going and still make something good. And then when I went to edit the actual footage, it just had not turned out the way I had wanted it. I had wanted to do all these special effects and after effects that I don't actually know how to do because I don't really know after effects, but I figured I could learn, but I ran out of time to figure those out. I didn't like my costume. I didn't like my makeup. I had questioned the entire concept itself. I just wasn't sure that I had made the strongest possible artistic choices for this video and that was really bothering me, but I was also out of time, so I had to work with what I had. And my song was another big problem. I used Kanye West Monsters because I had this idea of using an unexpected rap song to pull this whole fantasy theme together. I just wasn't really feeling the song. I liked the song, but it doesn't really speak to me. While editing, I never hit this sense of flow that I usually do when I am working on a video project. Typically, no matter how exhausted I am when I'm editing a video, I get surges of energy because I'm so excited and inspired by the editing process. So I made the whole video with two hours left to spare. I watched it through and I hated it. I did not like my Fantasy Week video at all. I hadn't figured out the After Effects editing that I had wanted to do. I felt self-conscious about my wardrobe and my makeup. The plotline wasn't clearly presented. So I decided to re-edit my video, cut out about 40 seconds to make it slightly more watchable. After doing that, I still didn't love it, but I had to turn it in. I didn't have any more time. So I uploaded the video and I found out that, because Kanye West is Kanye West. This song and the video was blocked worldwide. No one would have even known that I had uploaded a video that week. They never would have seen it. There was no way for me to get my YouTube audience to go watch a video on Vimeo. It would have been totally impossible. I would never would have made it to the next round anyway because no one would have seen my video. They would have thought I hadn't done one. So I had 40 minutes left to meet the 11.59 p.m. deadline. My time, that deadline is 2.59 a.m. So I started editing in another song and then I realized while I was exporting that that video that this song because I decided to check was actually also blocked worldwide. 
So now I only had about 20 minutes left to edit in a new song, export, upload, and get it sent in via email submission to make the deadline. So I found a third song that definitely worked. I began exporting and I was watching the second hand tick down to 3 a.m. while I was grabbing the link from YouTube and throwing it in the email to send to Hooping Idol, to Hooping.org, so that I could get this video in on time. <sighs> So talk about a train wreck. Not only did I dislike my video, but I also barely made the deadline. I shared the video to Facebook, but since it was three in the morning, no one liked or commented on it, and I got discouraged and deleted the video. And uh, guess what? My audience was asleep. Normally, I would posted my videos between 9 and 11.30 p.m., and my audience, they weren't asleep yet, they were winding down for the night, so I missed this initial hype that I usually got from sharing my video. The next day, all my analytics were down, and I could sense that I had messed some things up. I never generated the initial hype for my video that I needed and the result was that I reached a smaller audience and people just weren't talking about my video like they had in the weeks before. Despite the fact that I hated my own video, to my surprise, my video came in second for Fantasy Week. But again, I hadn't successfully generated enough conversation to pull in the votes that I needed to get through the round. It's also possible that people thought I was a shoe in and so they didn't come out and support me the way they had before because they figured, eh, she'll make it through. Mm -hmm. It's also possible that no one actually liked my video. I don't I mean, maybe you didn't like it, I don't know. Regardless, I believe that I threw my audience off because I didn't post the video in the timely manner when everybody had expected it. That was because my own insecurity kept me from getting the work done on time. But here's the thing. I didn't lose this competition at all. I decided to do Hooping Idol because I wanted to challenge myself creatively, with my video production, with my hooping skills. I wanted to make cool videos and see what I could do, what I could accomplish if I really put my mind to it. And I discovered that I'm actually quite creative and I'm innovative and I'm resourceful and I'm successful and I'm expressive and I can tell a good story through video production and I can do cool editing tricks that I didn't know I could do before. Not only that, but I realized how many thousands of people, friends, family, strangers who I don't even know, enthusiastically, wholeheartedly support my artistic endeavors. Seriously, I had no idea that so many people liked what I can do and what I am doing. All that said, a challenge like this, a competition like this, truly is what you make of it for yourself. For the past few months, I have been doing this little exercise every night where I write down what I was successful at that day, what I failed at that day, and why that failure ended up actually being a good thing for me that day. I got this idea from the founder of Spanx, whose father made her and her siblings discuss how they had failed every day and why that failure ended up being a good thing for them. This exercise has changed my life. This approach has truly changed how I look at myself, how I look at my failures, how I understand my process of working through different difficulties. So today I was successful because I tried and today I failed because I didn't win Hooping Idol. But that ended up being a good thing because I can see with so much more clarity than ever before all the other ways that I actually won. Not only did I have fun, I learned new skills, I met new people, I created videos that I am super super proud of and can use in my portfolio, I grew my YouTube channel, and without a shadow of a doubt I know I have the ability now to look at anything in my life that others might deem a fail and see all of the good that actually came out of it. I'm much better at that than I realized. Big thank you to everybody who sent me messages, who commented, who followed this journey with me, who watched my videos, who shared them, who voted for me, who gave me support and advice to the guy who loaned me an SD card to film one of my videos, my SD card filled up, to my boyfriend for traveling all over with me to film these videos, to my friends who gave me feedback and gave me their honest opinions about what I was creating. I'm so thankful to have been a part of this process. It really was life-changing and affirming and just wonderful all around. A big thank you to The Hoop Shop for sponsoring this week's video. They sent me five beautiful LED hula hoops to use for my final Hooping Idol videos, although I can't use them for those. I will be doing a review about these hula hoops shortly and also uh, featuring them in some videos coming up. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I'm gonna continue to make videos because this is what I do. I will put the link below so you can watch the rest of the Hooping Idol contestants this week. Follow this competition and give them support and give them a vote if you like what they're doing because there are still five people in the running to become the next Hooping Idol. And best of luck to all of them. I know they are going to just smash it. All right, talk to you later. Much love, Hooping World. Bye!